But anyway, let's get to the business. We have now here with us Radovan Bast, who is the master of everything. Well, master is maybe a big word, but at least one of the biggest driver of the code refinery network and workshop and, and so on. Radovan, do you want to say something about yourself? What do you do in your daily? Yeah, so it's so nice to be here. I work in Norway. Um, in terms of, I work on code refinery training, training in software development, software tools, in computing. In Norway, I work at the national infrastructure. Uh, so there is a national compute. Um, we have national compute clusters, and I provide support and help and training so that researchers get more out of their CPU cycles. And um, and it's nice to be here with this Finland that uh, with uh, with this training, which is uh, driven by um, by Alto, because I really like to collaborate with uh, with my Alto colleagues. We we work together on many different training events. And also, I really like talking about this topic. And I think it's very, it doesn't matter whether this is now Norway or Finland or a different country. I think some of the, um, some of the <clears throat> points that we will discuss are really transferable and they, so it will be fun to talk about how we do help desk and support in here in Trouble but also at Alto and what are, what, how can we improve it? How can we improve the experience for everybody? And this small change here is that I will be presenting this together with Enrico because Richard yeah. has been heroically restoring the stream in the meantime and had to switch computer. And I will now switch to, so for everybody, the best way to follow the next 20 minutes, because we are a little bit behind schedule, is you can find the slides. The slide deck here, is it linked from, from the schedule? It is also linked here in in the notes and the best way to interact is to watch us presenting and please ask us lots of questions give comments and Enrico will help me raising some questions that I might overlook so I will now open up this this presentation and when I do that I already have it here in this browser We'll just resize a little bit and I will make sure that I can see your questions here on the bottom. So let's talk about how to ask for help on with computers and supercomputers. And it's really about the goal is to improve your experience when solving issues. And some of the topics that I will talk about is what kind of help is available, uh, when to ask for help, and then how you can formulate your support request so that you get quick and useful answers. And if we have time, we can talk about reproducible examples and the value of growing your calculation and simplifying problems, how that can help you find answers quicker. And the, the slide deck is, there's credit. It has, I've learned a lot from other people and some, some of the persons are here and thanks so much for you know this input and i would like to start with this question <clears throat> there are these many places where you can ask where you can ask for help and i can ask uh, enrico like if you if you look for help i mean if you look for a solution how do you like where do you ask how do you ask yeah it's uh, it depends of course on the type of issue but maybe I really like that there's people. So I, we have this Zulip, which is a system for chatting together. We have one at Alto, we have one with the code refinery. So we have dedicated channels when anyone can ask for help. And when the question is too difficult, the human is, is, is the best in my opinion. <laughs> what about you? Yes, I really like that. And I want to highlight here, so it can be colleagues. So hopefully you have somebody in the corridor who, who knows an answer. There are also these at Alto, it's called the garage. It's a daily help desk session where you can come and ask questions. Uh, we have something similar here in Tromso, weekly office hours. Then we have monthly Q&A sessions in Norway. So hopefully your 
like your compute center provides these sessions. So it's really nice to, I think, come and talk to a person. Then there are, I think, very popular these days is to also ask the AI through a chat interface. There is documentation, issue tracker, um, research software engineers who can help you with when it's more about the code rather than about the computation, and then mailing list forum, Stack Exchange. I have, I try to order them a little bit how they are. So the ones on the bottom are, at least for me, maybe a little bit scarier to ask because then it's I ask the question to the whole internet. Some people prefer to ask questions more to colleagues. So many places to ask. Oh, thanks for highlighting at CSE, weekly user support sessions. So I think these are great initiatives because as I will show later, sometimes an email is not enough because in an email, we have to read between the lines. Sometimes the actual question is not asked and it can help to really discuss in person. Uh, when to ask for help, don't hesitate, don't wait too long. Uh, really many people really like helping. Um, but I can also say that as a support staff, I do appreciate when I see that the person who is writing the email maybe spent two minutes on the problem before asking. And not because it's about like my two minutes of work, uh, but it often makes, it often, often sharpens the question. It makes it that they think a little bit about, about the problem and sp give me a little bit more context. Oh yeah, also on Lumi every Wednesday of the month, wonderful. So please keep these comments coming and the questions, I really like that. Uh, next slide, um, it, sometimes I give myself a time limit that I um, tell me that, okay, I will, I will try to fix this. I will give myself one hour. And then if it doesn't work, I will go to the garage, open off uh, office hour or uh, user support session and ask for help there. And it can be also nice to say like, what, what do you want from the help? Would you like advice or would you like them to do something for you? Like to install software or to, to do profiling or do some programming. Who is on the other side? So when I send an email, it's good to know that on the other side, there is a human being. Also when I reply the email and as a reminder to myself, so when I'm staff and helping others, I, I want to remind myself, it's not easy to ask for help. The person who's asking me didn't spend the last 25 years with Unix and Linux. Um, maybe the person on the other side has spent weeks on this problem and waited for my answer. So really it's important to be respectful. Um, it's good to know for those who ask questions via email that uh, the support uh, that is helping and answering these might maybe change every week. So in, in Norway, we are rotating. So every few weeks, there might be different people answering. Uh, when I answer these questions, I don't know everything. I might sometimes I feel like I'm spending less time on the supercomputing supercomputer than the person asking. So very often I don't know the answer, but I can we can together try to try to find the answer and solve it. And especially if this is if this is a system with with many users. So on on our systems we have something around two thousand users. How about how about Alto? How many users are there? Yeah, many. At least the cluster is one thousand five hundred yeah. more. So yeah, same levels. Yeah, and probably Lumi comparable, CSE comparable, maybe even more. And which means that I might not know the person who's writing the email. I might not have the context. It's good to create this context when asking through like email chat. And I remember my first question, my first ever technical email request that I wrote to somebody. So I wrote a long email to a professor, very respectful paragraphs and paragraphs. And I, what I really wanted is I wanted to get access to, to the source code that they, that they used in a publication. But, and after a while, I got this very short email back and the, the, the answer was, hi, I guess what you meant asking in between all those paragraphs was, can I please get the code X? 
and here it is. So I got what I wanted, but I felt a little bit embarrassed because because it was just not clear what I wanted. Uh, I didn't make it clear. One thing that can help is that in these email requests, oh, email subject is the first thing that I see when when oh, trying to help. So to make it descriptive. So if the email subject is problem, it is not very useful because then everybody needs to open it up and see what it, what is inside. If there is a if there is a descriptive subject, it's easier for us to to route the email to the right person. Sometimes I don't know the answer, but my colleagues know the answer, and then I can try. It, it makes it easier for me to find the right colleague. About the providing context. <clears throat> So what are the things that can help us to having this context? Like having a username. If you are one of the 1,500 users or 2,000 users, I can probably figure it out, but it will take time. Um, if you talk about storage and location, then it is good to have an explicit path. It's, it's better than saying it is in my home folder or it, it's, it is in a relative folder because then it means something else for you than for me, and I need to find out. It takes some time. And if if there are multiple clusters, machines, tell us which machine it is, which software, which research field, if if relevant. Um, if if you modify your software environment in a in a file like .bashrc, then tell us about it because your .bashrc where you can have your own customization is different than mine. So I might have a different environment. Good. Would be nice to have more questions here in the document. And speaking about questions, one thing that is really good to know is if something doesn't work, oh, tell us, has it ever worked? So is it the first time that you tried this or is it or has it worked, you know, last last Tuesday and today doesn't work anymore? That's really useful. What are you trying to accomplish? And and here, like, what is your real, what is your ultimate goal and not the current technical obstacle? And I, I might return to that point. Um, and what did you do so far? So try to be specific. Um, copy paste all the commands so so that I can reproduce it. And then what do you need? Do you need a complete solution? Do you need advice? Do you need... Um, it's just that we um, allocate the right time. Uh, I, it helps me when I see that like the support email tells me what you have tried. Again, has it stopped working or has it ever worked? Does it always fail this way or only sometimes? And if you have tried to simplify the problem then tell us how and uh, that that helps a lot uh, and please check documentation at web but sometimes the web is wrong so don't hesitate to ask because sometimes the web gives gives help on how how to solve something on a laptop and that doesn't work on a cluster And I think what the the comment that comes down uh, comes here at the bottom is a very good comment. Is that sometimes when you ask a question, you get the feeling that support people are bothered, and that's really sad if it is like that. Um, so I think the support help should always be welcoming and understanding, and it is really sad if through the short electronic communication, it feels like uh, people are distracted or bothered. I think it is really our, one of our main roles is to help research and help you to, to solve computational problems. So unfortunately, that's sometimes true. And I, th I think we, uh, we here work hard on, on improving this. Uh, I mentioned that it's good to know what is your what is your goal not what is the current technical obstacle and when we meet in person in during garage and during office hours 
it's easier to figure this out. When when we just send an email, it's sometimes hard because so one famous thing is this so-called XY problem where imagine a user wants to solve something, wants to do something, and then searches the internet and somewhere finds out that in order to do this, you need to do this um, obstacle, the technical obstacle is Y. And then, then the user tries this and hits a problem and then asks for help with this technical obstacle. And then we spend some time, uh, much interaction, a couple of emails back and forth. And after this a couple of interaction, we figure out that this technical obstacle that we solved uh, was not even the suitable solution. And what the user really wanted to do is X, but it was never written. We didn't know, we never knew. And if we knew, we would have suggested maybe a completely different solution to do this. So it's really good to to say it. What do you really want to do? And I think I will show two examples uh, in a moment. Maybe good to know what happens with your email when you send it. So on our side in Norway, and I think it's similar in in other places, when you send us an email, it opens up something called a ticket, an issue, it gets a number. And there we have a place to, to track it and keep track of it, to have a conversation in it, to keep a context. And it's good to know that these tickets issues can change hands. That's why we need to really document this context. And good, uh, better formulated requests avoid this lengthy back and forth. And once a problem is resolved, then the, the ticket or issue gets closed. And I want to show you two, two example requests that they are a little bit redacted, but they are real. And we can discuss here with Enrico what we like about them. So here's a real request. Oh, hi, I'm a user of some, some name on the cluster Zaga. So that's a, that's a cluster here that we have in Norway. And since this morning, I cannot log in anymore. I have tried to log in into some other clusters and this works and I use SSH keys to log in and the error that I get since this morning is the following and thank you in advance for help advice how to solve this. So what do we like about this request? What is really nice about this? Yeah, I mean, at least I clearly see the problem, the issue. I, mm -hmm. I can already see that the user has tried to do some type of, you know, debugging or whatever you want to call it, troubleshooting. Yeah. So really good context here. Just from this email, I can see that I can see what the user tried. Cannot log in, log in anymore, but can log in on to other clusters, which means that it's probably, there is a problem probably since this morning on the cluster. Just from this email, I can see that it's probably not some not something on their side. It's something on our side. And there is even an error message, which means that from this, I get a really good idea of what it might be. And I might be able to solve it in sort of one shot solution. And the next email is says it's solved. And I can see the time. So I can see that we have maybe maximum five minutes left. So to the moderators here, don't worry, I can see that. I want to show one an, another example, which is also real. And the email that we got was, hi, I'm not sure I wrote to the right support line, but what I'm looking for is a virtual machine where we can install a PHP web server with a MySQL database behind it. And what we have in mind is to set up a service where we can share the data from our recent study and the data can be fully public. It's about 2000 records, so not, it's not much data. And we would like to create a web front end where people can search through and plot our data. And looking forward to hear more, whether this is possible. Um, what do you like about this one? Well, I mean, I would say that it looks like they know what they're doing and what they want to do, because most likely mm -hmm. they might be already familiar with web development and MySQL. But what do you think about this one? Yeah, so what I like is that they ask very specific what they want 
but what I also like is that they give a context of what they, uh, what, so the, really the goal. So here's the technical things, but here is what they would like to have. They would like to have a web service. I also like that they tell me that it's public data. So immediately I know I don't have to worry about, it's not something for a sensitive, uh, sensitive data, it's public. Also, I get a good idea of the size of it. So this will probably not be terabytes and petabytes. And what was good here is that if, if the question was just this, we would have done it. We would have created a virtual machine and installed exactly what they wanted. Um, but thanks to this paragraph, we, in this particular case, we realized that there was a better way of doing it. And we did something different for them and they are very happy about it. So we did, we didn't do this because for, for their example, we found something that was a better fit, but since we had this big picture, we could suggest this, this other uh, suggestion. And, and so we did it, everybody's happy. And I like that it was not just the immediate next step, but it was, where do they want to be at the end? Good. We have very few minutes left. Would be nice to have more questions here. Please keep them coming. Um, I think the last few slides are some recommendations on how you can create examples that uh, that you can share with support to make it easier. And one recommendation that I like to give is that when you are on a new machine or you have never been on a cluster before or something is failing, it's it's nice if you can start with a small example. So don't start with a gigantic example with that runs on lots of compute nodes and requires 40 hours to run. If the same problem can be reproduced with a small example, then it's really useful for you and it's really useful for the support. And when I'm on a new system that I don't know well, I, I like to start with something that runs in five minutes, maybe on one core. And then once it works, then I go to more time, more cores, bigger system. And then, then I make my calculation longer. That really helps me identifying lots of problems early. And I don't have to wait 40 hours to, to figure this out. And then it, whenever I suggest it, uh, a good comment could be, but, but wait a bit. Uh, making a small system is not realistic. My my realistic system is big and takes long. And then my advice is that it doesn't have to be realistic. It can be a synthetic example. So very simplified. You remove lots of, you make the, I don't know, smaller resolution, smaller data set, but it can help us to, to debug lots of technical issues. And then once they are sorted out, then we can go back to the realistic system. So this is a technique that I really like to use and it can make it much, much easier to solve problems. And I think only two, two minutes left. So I really highly recommend to create a small reproducible example for a typical calculation that you run. Because then when, when this doesn't work anymore, you can quickly verify, is this a problem on your side or is it a problem on the cluster side? And if it's a problem on the cluster side, you can send them this small example and they can run it as well and use it to, to diagnose the problem. If this is an interactive job where you type commands and run the job sort of live, then please provide all commands from login to problem. It, also, this helps us to to diagnose and to reproduce and retrace your steps step by step precisely as you as you as the, you did and the smaller examples they make it often they simplify the problem they can help identifying the reason they reduce the number of freedoms it's it's easier to debug and also it doesn't queue it doesn't it doesn't wait in the in the queue forever if it's smaller 
we as staff we also have to wait in the queue like we don't have a prioritized queuing so if this if this is a very long example it's also long for us and i think my time is up uh, i think i want to go to the summary slide you are not alone approach support and resources to engineers near you pop into a garage session or a q a help session or an office hour and say hi it's also a great place to not just ask questions, but give suggestions to, uh, on how we can improve the systems. You are probably not alone experiencing a problem. And the questions are never too stupid, too simple. They are very often good questions. Many people really enjoy helping. And the people who organize this, this course, they really, really enjoy helping and are good at this. It's also OK from time to time to tell us if something is working well. It doesn't happen very often that, you know, at 2 a.m. in the morning, you get an email that somebody thinking, well, the system is actually working and thanks. But um, good to hear that as well. And here the comment. Um, yeah, so it can be you can start with your with your own team, start with a colleague. And 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 then you can escalate, go to other places. So it can be it can be a progression. Um, what did we miss? Um, anything I missed to say? No, I think this was super useful, especially considering that I know that, let's say, half of the participants who are registered for this session are people who just started yeah. with their summer internship. So asking for help and getting the most out of it is, is really important when you're just starting. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Radovan. This was very useful. And um, regarding the streaming, so the connection from the streaming server to the rest of the internet is fine again. So I hear from the from the back from the back room that we should be able to switch to the better streaming server. Good. So then, thanks everybody for thanks listening. I give I give back to the studio, and I'll yes. look forward to more.